Fuck yes. Welcome to another Summerween vlog. Hello, my loves. It is Summerween part two. I am so excited. It's also freaking Friday. Yeah. It's been a long, long week, guys. Um, even though it was a short week because I took Monday off, um, yeah, I'm just ready to shut off and relax, but here I am. I just want to tell you really quickly what my reading plans are for the weekend. So really what we're going to be focusing on this weekend is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. Is this upside down? No, it's not. I am a hot mess because I need some sleep. I'm over caffeinated, but aren't we all? Um, I have just broken the 100 page mark. I am specifically on page 132 and things are just starting to sort of pop off. It was the first like I would say 90 pages is just set up. Now Stephen King is very good about setting up the town, the people in the town, the main character and where he's coming from and like setting the atmosphere. Stephen King is at his finest when he's doing that. And things have just happened. Um, so this isn't a spoiler. You can tell this from like the Goodreads synopsis, but a child has gone missing and now the whole town has gone into a tizzy trying to find the, this child. And also someone has moved in to this very creepy old house in the town. If you hear a noise in the background, my cat is scratching on her scratch board. Um, but like I said, things are just starting to happen and starting to move forward. And I'm enjoying myself so far, but I'm ready for some real classic Stephen King spookiness. And this is one of Stephen King's uh, classics. Uh, my mother told me about this book when I was really young. She told me about the movie directed by John Carpenter. And I am just so excited to finally read something that my mom has read. Yes, yes, I'm ready to join the ranks of some horror loving women in my family. I need to clarify that I said horror, not whore. I always feel like I say whore. Anyway, I'm also still trying to finish the audiobook Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. And just a quick recap, that is about four authors who stay overnight at a haunted house for an extended interview. And I am a little over halfway through the book and things have just taken an interesting turn that I didn't think they were going to take. Um, I'm not going to reveal anything because it is going to be a spoiler, but things are actually starting to get scary now. My friend did tell me when I was, um, when I asked her about it, that this is more of a slow burn novel and that the payoff is closer towards the end. So I'm interested now that things are really starting to get moving. They, it was mostly set up until now and yeah. So that is the weekend I have ahead of me and just being generally spooky and fall like, yeah. Okay. I will talk to you later once I've read some more. Bye. Hello. Um, okay. So I've been sitting here in this little corner right here where it's nice and cozy with my sleepy cat. And, um, I am on page 230 of Stephen King and, uh, Salem's Lot. Things have happened, but mostly nothing has happened and I'm ready for things to happen. So how do I say, well, shit is just boring right now boring i don't am i just tired am i just not in the mood for this right now i might be both um yeah that's all i have to say right now S okay so i will say that stephen king has a thing for like children dying this is not this is not a spoiler you can read this on the back but 
he is a thing for children dying and I've noticed that, so that's cool. Um, he definitely has a thing for like broken family structures and um, I mean, I think he's had his own broken family history, I think. Um, but other than that, nothing of interest has happened in the 230 pages and I'm gonna need them to pack it up, to hurry it along before I lose my mind. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. I've committed most of today to reading. I have um, my neighbors coming over later this afternoon. We're gonna have dinner, we're probably gonna play some games. Um, so I have to clean eventually, so I will have to stop reading, but something has to happen in this book or I'm gonna be super mad because everyone has told me this is good. Everyone has told me that this is one of Stephen King's is like, you know, just, you know, his OG, his OG stuff. And here I am saying, I'm not feeling it just yet. So back to it. Guys, I recently, I recently found a spare Mike's Hard in my um, refrigerator and I was saving it for a really hard day, but Today might be that day because we are not very far in this book. There are 653 pages in Salem's Lot. I am exactly 250 pages in. And I've resulted, resulted. See, I can't even talk. I've resorted to very bad alcoholic drinks that will probably make me sick later because of the sugar because I don't like this. If this doesn't pick up sooner or later, I'm gonna lose my shit. I want to like this book so hard. I really do. It is just, you know, it's the first book that my, um, it's the first Stephen King book that my mother told me about. I have a few friends that are into horror and they love this book. <sighs> what is broken about me? What is broken? Because, let me set this down so I can rant. It, the only thing that has happened in this book is that I understand that the townspeople of Salem, Jerusalem's lot, are a bunch of drunks, children abusers, and xenophobics. Like, what? And I know that this is a constant thing in a Stephen King novel. All of those are elements of a Stephen King novel. However, most other Stephen King novels that I have read have not taken this long to pick up. And I was talking to my good friend Josh and he was like, it does pick up, but it never gets crazy. And the ending quote unquote is a limp dick. <laughs> oh God. So he basically said that if I haven't been enjoying this book, like right now, up until now, I probably won't enjoy it at all. I feel like I owe it to myself to give it at least another 50 or so pages, see if it draws me in, but I'm burning daylight and I'd love to just move on from this book if it's not gonna have a payoff. I like slow burns, but if I have to hear about a mundane life of a townsperson anymore in this book, I'm going to shit myself. I am just taking a brief interlude from reading. I am now on page 316. So I am about 70, 80-ish pages from when things were horrendously boring and they are no longer boring. So <laughs> turns out I just wasn't patient enough, blah, patient enough till the good part started rolling in. So I might be able to power through this book. I am technically halfway, yep, halfway through the book, finally. And I think it might actually be good from here. It might actually be able to salvage itself from here. And I am very excited about that. Okay, goodbye.
Hi friends, um, I come back to you with a check-in of frustration, of utter frustration. I am less than 200 pages from the end of this book and I sort of just wanna throw it out the window. Like literally, I wanna open a window in my house and throw it away. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I have principles as a book lover. Um, so, a little insight to me. When I am struggling with a book that is quote unquote a hit or sort of like, you know, um, a pop cultural icon of sorts, I hit my social media platforms up. I go on Twitter, I go on my Facebook reading groups, and I go on um, Instagram and I ask questions, I ask opinions, like, am I the only person experiencing this? Why do I feel this way about this book? I need external validation, basically, basically. Well, every, well, most everyone that I've talked to says that I just need to hang on. I need to pull my big girl panties up and finish the book because it's worth it at the end. Well, let me tell you, I have read almost 500 pages of this book now and it, none of it has felt worth it. And I hate to be this way because this was the book that I was honestly the most excited about other than Little Heaven by Nick Cutter for this readathon. So I'm gonna do something that is sort of unprecedented. I'm going to, with the aim to come back to this later, I'm going to put this down. I'm gonna put this the hell down because I'm so tired of all of this in the book. And I'll tell you why later. I've already sort of hinted at why I don't like it. The townspeople, the description, the world building, ay ay ay. And you know what? These are all Stephen King like highlights. They're, they're classic Stephen King traits in his writing, but I just can't make it through in this book. So I'll come back to that later, but I'm gonna put this down. I wanna try and finish it because I'm so close to the end, um, but we only have a couple hours left in this reading vlog, or rather this summer ween readathon. And I wanna end this vlog with a bang. I want to read something that really was like, well then, I enjoyed that because between this and Kill Creek by Scott Thomas, I'm sort of bored to tears. And now Kill Creek is different. At Kill Creek, I can tell there's a, a, a slow buildup happening, but, but things have been happening since it started. I'm just not scared in that book, but I've still been intrigued by the plot. This, I'm not intrigued by the plot. I'm not scared. I hate half these characters, or rather I'm not invested in them. <sighs> End rant. End rant. Let's move on to the book that I'm gonna pick up for the last couple of hours of this readathon, because it technically ends today. Um, I'm gonna pick up Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. Now this is very short, part of the reason why I'm picking it up. It is, uh let's see 131 pages guys i can read 131 pages it is like two o'clock right now i tend to go to bed around 9 10 maybe 11 if i'm trying to push it we can get through this especially if it's as good as it sounds so if you don't know what night of the mannequins is about it's about a young man or boy who decides to play a prank in a movie theater and he i guess the mannequin comes alive um yeah and basically uh the main character the young man has a plan he wants to play hero and he doesn't matter it doesn't matter how many people he kills in order to save the day it's supposed to be sort of psychological but also like classic horror i don't know all i know is that Everyone who got this in their Nightworms box has enjoyed it, and it is apparently fast-paced, it's unexpected, and I've been wanting to read something of Stephen Graham Jones for a while now. So I, I'm gonna try this, and I will check in with you later. I'm sorry I have like raged at you for the last couple of minutes. Let's hope this goes better, and we can salvage this readathon, because I'm crying, not externally, internally like a lot of tears, sobbing, ugly crying internally. Okay, goodbye. Hello, my sweet goblins. It is Monday afternoon. It is the day after everything officially ended with the Summerween readathon. It was supposed to end yesterday. And here I am being late as usual to update you, share some thoughts. So we'll just get into it really quickly. The last time I checked in with you, I was reading Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. Now, 
This book is only 130 some pages, but I've only gotten to about 83, 84 in terms of page count. And really that's just because I was honestly so burnt out last night. I was so ready to be done with reading for a little bit. The fun thing about readathons is that you get to challenge yourself, you get to explore new books, new authors, you get to create a really exciting TBR. The not so fun thing is that you're kind of, especially if you're a creator, um, is that you're like rushing to edit things, film things, make sure everything is aesthetically pleasing or not, or maybe it's just chaotically aesthetic somehow, like in the case of me. Um, and also just you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself and I tend to put pressure on myself as it is. Um, so readathons are just like extra, but with that being said, oh, it started raining. So if you hear things in the background, it's raining. Um, with that being said, I really enjoyed this um, challenge and this readathon in general. So thank you, Gabby and Olivia. Um, I'll link all of their information below. They're the ones that started the readathon. But so, let's get back to this book. So when I first started this book, the pace and the writing was pretty erratic. I couldn't, I was coming down from Salem's Lot, which was pretty pedestrian in pace. It was really slow, really boring. And it was more of like a moody sort of slow atmospheric buildup. This sort of just plops you right in the middle of things that are happening and it's um, all stream of consciousness from like this teenage boy's mind. So of course it's like crazy and erratic and what I thought it was originally going to be was it was going to be about a mannequin that like came to life and it is it is but it's also like a psychological thing like a psychological thriller um it, because this is in the mind of a teenager who will who wants to stop this murderous mannequin at whatever cost possible so whatever you glean from that description is completely different from what's actually in this book and at first i didn't like it i'll be honest i was like god this pacing this like sort of writing is really strange. I don't enjoy it. Um, and then the further I thought about it and read into it, I was like, I get it. I get it. This kid is batshit crazy. And I think I'm enjoying this. I think I'm okay with this now. So I'm gonna finish it. I'll probably post a review later on um, dedicated to this book. But right now i would say it's probably like a 3.5 out of five stars in terms of enjoyment that'll probably raise by the time i finish with this book but i'm really glad that i got to start this during this readathon okay let's go to the other books so this book my best friends exorcism we've already talked about this in my previous vlog i'm just going to go through all the books that i got to read throughout this readathon this is five out of five stars i loved every second of it every minute of it it was my jam. I will be posting a full review video of this. So just keep keep an eye out for that. Grady Hendrix, I want to marry you. Okay, let's get to the sad boy of this readathon. Stephen King's Salem's Lot. Guys, I left off on page, wow, I was really close to the end, 483. There's 630 some pages in this like edition. <sighs> I wanted to like this so much because my mother liked this. My mother talked about it when I was a kid. Everybody seems to like it. People that I respect, their horror opinions, they all loved this book. And I just did it. It just wasn't for me. And here's a lesson that I obviously continuously need to learn that just because everyone likes something or everyone hates something doesn't mean that I won't feel the exact opposite. And so what if that's true? So what if I don't like the same thing? Um, and I just need to remember that to drill that into my brain and realize that that's okay. And I don't have to force myself into unenjoyable circumstances such as this book very boring, did not enjoy it, two stars. I'm very sorry, Stephen King. I will still continue to read him as an author, but I'm done with this book. Okay, the last book that I'm actually still working on, I have about three hours left on my audiobook, is Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. Now, I, somewhere in the middle, was like, I don't think I like this book. And then, 
towards the latter half of this book, I realized this is actually a good book for a couple reasons. The character development on point. I like all these characters. I like their different voices. I like what the author has done to sort of bring them to life. Um, another reason why I like this book. I really enjoy the writing style. It is um, very rich. It's not overly flowery, but it is definitely atmospheric. It helps build the dread and the history of the house on Kill Creek. I love that. And I also love how the writing really lends itself to describe each and every one of the characters and their own personal traumas and horrors. I really enjoy that a lot. Um, I will say I'm just not scared. Now I wonder too if it's because I'm listening to it on audiobook. Uh, nothing about this book scares me. But here's another thing that I've learned on this reading vlog, Summerween read readathon adventure. Um, horror does not always have to scare me. Horror is the exposition of the unknown, the secretive, the occult, the hidden, and sort of bringing that to life, dragging the depths uh, of the terrible nature of the human condition out into the light to let it all be seen. And I am fascinated by that. I'm also fascinated. And it's also the, the exploration of lore, of things that are hidden by past and history and cultural traditions. And I think at first, if you had asked me maybe even yesterday, if I had a good time during this readathon, I would have been like, no, I didn't pick the right books. I could have definitely done a little, a few things differently. And mostly it has to do with the books. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm glad that I picked the books that I did because it introduced me to a lot of different voices in horror, classic, up and coming, um, et cetera. And I also got introduced to different varieties of horror, not necessarily the type that always scares me, but definitely could not be anything other than horror. Um, for example, the um, Kill Creek by Scott Thomas. It is about a haunted house. It is about four authors who have their own personal horrors and they are magnified the moment they step into this house. Horrible things happen in this house and after this house and before this house. And honestly, I love it. I love it. Um, if I had to give my rating right now, I would give it probably a four stars. And that is a vastly different rating from what I would have given it like six hours ago into this audiobook, I'll be honest. But I just really took a step back yesterday and realized that I had been pushing myself. I'd been really pressuring myself to read all these books and get to the end of them without really like stopping to enjoy them the way I like to, um, which is my fault. It's not the readathon's fault. And now I realize that I got everything I wanted out of this readathon and I can't wait for more spooky things coming up. Okay. I have now been ranting to you for a while, but we did cover all the books that um, I read during this readathon. And honestly, guys, it was a great freaking time. I enjoyed being the spookiest miss I could be in August, okay? Okay, I know y'all are with me since you're here, you're watching this, you're participating. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you loved it as much as I loved making it for you. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and guys, I'll see you next time when I'm creating more spooky stuff for you. Yeah! Bye, y'all.